Alrighty, ho ho, welcome back everyone to another part of our Crayola colouring in Johanna Basford's World of Flowers. I'm just going to address the obvious, I have an injury, um, it's pretty disgusting looking so I've just covered it up for this video um, so that you don't have to endure the, the, the horrible finger. Anyway, right, so what I would like to do today is try and finish this. Uh, nobody really gave me a response in terms of colouring these leaves. So I just went ahead and did them in my own time and all I did was use the same colours that I had used in the the other areas down here. I just kind of added them in here. The only thing I did different was this one and at the back I just stuck with the olive and the outer space just to make it darker because again it's kind of tucked in behind everything else. So aside from that, everything else is pretty much the same technique as we were using previously. So let's crack on. I'm going to go on to these big sort of petals up here. I deduced that these are some sort of maybe like sunflowers or something but now we're at the stage where we're coming to the sort of final part of the picture so again we want to keep that cohesiveness. So in that sort of interest I have gone back to the orange circuit which if you remember was the colour that we've used in the background in this sort of midsection. Now to complement that I have picked a lighter and a darker colour. So my lighter colour is mango and the darker colour is plain old orange. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a bit of a gradient on these petals here and what that's doing again is it's helping to sort of balance out the picture so that we've got some orange nearer the top as well as nearer the middle and bottom. So if I just get zoomed in a little bit and we can crack on. So what I want to do first of all is I want to take the mango which is the palest colour and I just want to put a layer of this down over all three of these petals. Now again, I'm starting at the right hand side because I'm left handed. If you would like to start on the other side, there's uh, absolutely nothing stopping you. Now we're, we're pretty far away from the light source up here. There's not going to be a great deal going on. So we don't have to pay too much attention to the to the, the sort of light source and the way it's hitting the petals because your other argument there or your other theory could be that this border is effectively blocking it off or separating it from the rest of the picture that is entirely up to you i'm going to go with the orange circuit which is the mid-tone and was our original color and i'm just going to run some along here just like this and that is a really light hand and once again surprise surprise a really light layer and i'm going to do the same for the other two as well and bring it down a bit further in this middle one because it is a bigger petal and then just very very slightly along the top there and then we're going to switch to our darkest colour which is good old common or garden orange <laughs> and I'm really using this as a liner rather than actually using it to colour if that makes sense so I'm just going to run that along where the the liner actually is where that black line is and I'm pressing fairly heavily in comparison to what we have been doing and just sort of fading it out into into the orange circuit and I'm going to do the same along here as well again I just feel that this is a really delicate little piece of art and you don't I don't really want any sort of harsh lines or anything sort of brash sticking out so now we can work away and blend these colors together so going back to the mid-tone which is the orange circuit I'm just going to squish it in over with that orange in all those places. I'll just soften it up a little bit. We're back to the situation in the cave where Pip is on the floor and she's got one of her nylo bones and she's clacking away and crunching away there. So if that's in the background and you can hear it, I'm sorry. But it's, um, it's keeping her occupied. She's having a great time. She's rolling about the floor. And here's the mango. And we're just going to use this on the bottom. Now just thinking again, bearing in mind, you've got to build this up in layers. Don't press too hard. You should be well enough practiced by now. We've been through enough of this for you to, to have got the hang of it or at least be a bit better practiced if it's something that's new to you. So that looks quite cute. That looks quite nice. So we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Once again, we'll start with the mango. Every time I see the word mango or see an actual mango it reminds me of uh, an advert that was on tv for a while and it was a rubicon advert and there was a little song that went oh 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 we like the mango so every time i come across mango i start singing that song in my head <laughs> onto the orange circuit you bring that about halfway down there again nice and light 
and you don't want it to be too heavy handed. You can always go back in. And we'll just pop that in there as well. And take our orange. We'll pop a little bit of that in at the top there. Just soften that edge. So pull it out a little bit, but let up the pressure. So that we can get that nice, nice and soft transition into our lighter oranges. Don't know why I decided that had to be French there, but there you go. Feeling slightly French today. I never actually, uh, at school in the UK, or certainly in Scotland where I, where I went to school, we were never taught a language at primary school, but when we went to secondary school we had two years of compulsory French and since I left school I never used French again until I went to Mauritius last year. <clears throat> now uh, in Mauritius they do, it, it's quite a sort of um, hodgepodge of cultures which is one of the things I really liked about it, but they do speak English and they do speak French but they speak Creole amongst themselves. But what we found was that you got along a lot better if you could speak French than English. So I, uh, we actually got in tow, you know, we kind of like befriended this French couple who, sp who spoke pretty good English. And we actually found that our French came back quite quickly. So that was nice. Um, so every now and then in the past six months, I've had these French words pop out just for fun. Uh, but I did say if I was going to go back, I would brush up on my French a little bit and uh, speak to the locals in more of a familiar tongue to them. Okay, uh, in this dark part here, you've got a couple of options. You can either use maybe the the brick red on its own, because I mean, this really is, there's, there's not much room for manoeuvre in there. I wouldn't try gradients or anything. Or you could use the dark green as well, but I think I'm gonna go for the, the brick red and I'm just gonna color this in like flat color. And I'm going to press quite hard just in that little section. It's such a tiny space and I just think there's enough green in the picture already. But again, that's up to yourself, you know, use, use your own instinct for that and your own preferences. So I'm just going to fill that in, get that nice and dark. Okay, I've decided as well that with these side parts, these sort of frilly parts, I'm going to go back to the greens for that, but I'm going to do what I did with this one in here, which I coloured off camera. And that is, I'm just going to use the darkest green, which was the olive green, if you remember. Olive, focus, focus, yep. And back to my good old outer space, which, uh, yeah, is definitely one of my favourite pencils. So we can just put a really light layer of these i'm just starting on this side because it's closest to my hand it's just sheer laziness and nothing else <laughs> and uh just gonna pop down some of this all over here and really what's going to give us that depth and definition is the outer space it's not actually the green so that we're going to work more with that outer space pencil than we than we will with the the olive Again, I just wanted to keep this top section a bit darker just because it is far away from our, our created light source. So this bit's really tucked in behind. So I'm going to put a light layer of outer space down on both those sections. And then I'm going to start to build up the colour by alternating between that and the olive. And that's going to give us a really nice, deep, rich, dark colour. But you're still going to be able to see that it's green. It's just going to be very, very dark green. So just go back and forth and you will get to a point where the paper won't take any more of the pencil. Um, you know, you flatten the tooth of the paper to the point where it starts to go shiny and that's sure you've burnished it. And at that stage, there's no point in continuing because you will not be able to put any more pigment down the paper. And I would say I'm almost at that point. Okay, but you can see how dark that looks, but it is still green. And that's exactly what I did in these spaces here as well and behind this leaf. And that's worked out quite well and it's given quite a nice effect. With these sort of outer leaves, petals, frilly bits, whatever you want to call them, I'm going to go back to the principle of the light source. So it's going to be pretty dark up around this top edge here. So I'll just put that in in a sort of C shape at the, the left hand side there. That's pretty clear on the camera. And then I'm going to take my olive green 
and I'm just going to blend over what I've done. Now you can see that the, the space grey has started to sort of disappear. Space grey, outer space, sorry. So we want to define that again by just adding another layer. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So down on to the next one and along the same edge, try and get my hand out of the way, might be helpful, Jim. And just leave the olive green in that sort of middle part here. So we can do that with both of these sections. And then just a layer of the olive. And you can build that up to your heart's content. If you want that really dark, by all means, you know, you can just carry on. But I'd like to have a little bit of variation in, in what's going on, so I don't want it too dark. Okay, I'll move on to these ones here. So I'm kind of going to go on the same principle here. I, th I noticed we've got a rogue circle. If you look on the other side of the paper, there's only one circle at the top here, but on this side we have one and an extra one. <laughs> Which, that is one of the things I really like about Johanna's drawings because she does hand draw everything. Um, she, she, I think she calls herself an ambassador of ink. I can't, it's something like that anyway. Um, she doesn't believe in uh, using, you know, like digital images and then flipping them. She likes to do everything by hand, which is just lovely. And it results in things like this happening, which, I say, which I'm, I'm quite fond of myself. It tickles me. So I'm just keeping that olive green. Need us the light source, which granted isn't very nearby. So again, don't don't you know don't deliberate over it for too long. There's no need. So I'm gonna do like kind of arch shapes on these ones with the, the outer space. And sort of turn them into C shapes as we get further down. Again, I'm not really putting any pressure on it, I'm just just letting the pencil sort of touch the paper and do its thing. There we go. And then I can start working with the, the olive. I can blend that in a little bit. I was uh, interested to, to see someone had left a comment and I apologise to the person that left it because I can't remember who left it, so I'm sorry, but you know who you are. And they said that they had avoided Crayola pencils for such a long time because they'd been told that you can't blend with them. And uh, so I'm glad that I've maybe, I don't know, just given people the the realization that you can work with them, and you do have to work with them. That's the key. It's that it's not a, it's not an easy road, and you're not going to get you know instant results, but it can be done. It can be done. Right. So we've got these two little flippy ones here now as well. So we'll just uh, do the same thing again. Make that quite dark in at that crevice. Crevice. Yeah, crevice. Why not? We'll bring this down here. Make that quite dark in there as well. Like that. Looks okay. I quite like this olive green as well. It's uh, I'm quite fond of it. Not as fond as I am of outer space, but <laughs> nearly. And I'm just darkening that. Oh, I just want to give that a bit more definition there. I just felt it was a wee bit too subtle. I might as well, you know, not have bothered. So you can judge with your eye. And if you're happy with it, then you can move on. So I'm going to go and do this the other side exactly the same way. So I'll speed that bit up as well. And I'll catch up with you guys in just a second.
All right, so just before we finish up this top section here, I'm just going to go with my outer space and I'm going to add in some of these little um, sort of shadowy areas, just like I've been doing in the rest of the picture. So I really want some in here and I am using that flicking motion, but very, very lightly. And all I'm doing is just adding in that little bit. It's almost muddy looking just because it's in close to the tip of those flowers. And that is pretty much all I want to do. I feel as if there's enough definition here with these petals not to add in anymore. But I just wanted to give that little bit of contrast there just to make it a bit more interesting. All right then, so moving down here, we've got these flower centers and I, was, I kind of swithered about this, but I've decided to go with the oranges again. And it's just to keep a bit of uniformity. The other option would have been was to use this um, this yellow colour. But I just felt that I think I would I'd prefer the oranges. So I'm going to go with the mango. And I'm just going to pop that down in these three circles. Now truthfully, if you leave the mango in that sort of one layer on its own, it almost, excuse me, it almost passes for the, the golden yellow that we used. However we are going to produce higher quality work than that. We're not going to be lazy. If you wanted to use the yellow, I would suggest maybe using unmellow yellow, um, a, a mid yellow, maybe there's a normal yellow and using the golden yellow as the darkest color. That's entirely up to you. Uh, if you want to give that a go, maybe do a bit of experimenting. So I'm back to the orange circuit now and I'm just gonna run a C shape round the top right hand side of all of these. And although they are different flowers, I just feel as if they kind of belong together. So that all I'm doing there is emulating that light source again. That one can be pretty flat at the top just because of the position of it. But I'm going to bring that a lot further down because once again, it is further away from our light source. So I'll just pop a couple of layers of that down, make that one a bit more intense. And then this one here, this C shape again. So think of like a wee half moon. A wee half moon. And just go back and forth over it. If you want to intensify up the mango as well, feel free. I'm just going to leave mine as it is. I'm happy with, with that the way that it is. Moving on down. With these stalks, I'm going to go back to my greens. And this is, this is always fun. I like doing this. Because what I want to do is I want to use the yellow green and the jade green. So that was the two lighter greens that we've been using. And I want to use them on these parts here because, again, they're going to be closer to the light source. And I'm going to use the olive green and the outer space for the stems that are hanging down. So what I want to do is take the yellow green first of all. And I'm just going to pop a really light layer of that down on all of these little, little bits like this. So we'll do all these ones first because they, they're all kind of the same. And then I'm going to take my jade green and I'm going to do the same thing that I did up here just now. And I'm going to run the jade green round the top right. So in a bit of a C shape. And the ones that are further away, I'm going to put more of the jade green down. And the ones that are closer, I'm going to put a little bit less. This one here is not going to have much at all. And then I can go back with my yellow green. And just very gently pop in some of that, mix it in a little bit with the jade green. Nice and simple. That's one thing I always say as well, you know, you look at you look at some of the, you know, the pictures that maybe your your friends or your peers are putting on social media when they're sharing their colouring book pages. And sometimes you can get some really complicated effects. And it, they look complicated, but actually they're not. They're quite simple. And you, I, I am a firm believer in being able to produce a a very pleasing to the eye picture without having to spend hours and hours using a gajillion pencils and that's kind of what I'm, I'm out to prove with the you know especially with the Creolas which everyone seems to think there's a huge issue with. Okay so let's move on to these two middle ones now. Now these are going to be a little bit more complicated after me just saying nothing's complicated. So using the yellow green again I'll just pop a little bit down here and on this cap part two. So I want to give the, the illusion of a curvature here. So with my jade green, I'm going to use that C shape again, but I'm going to bring it up to almost the middle here and bring it down. 
and then feed it gently into the middle and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Like so, and I'm going to do the same with this little cap part as well. As you're more, you're more sort of straight up and down lines with that part there, just because it's a smaller area. Like this, and then we can use the yellow green in the middle, and we'll start to blend these together as well. So those circular motions, just go over that a couple of times, and then we can go back in with our jade green, and we can sort of tidy up our darken any areas up that you want darkened. There we go. Again, very, very subtle, but added, adding up with all the other little subtle things we've done in the picture, then it's just going to come together quite nicely. there as well. Back to yellow green, off we go. Get a couple of layers down in there. And then we can go back with the jade green. The other thing about this as well is you can always go in with your darker colour if you if you want a bit more of an accent. You can always go down to the olive green and just use it on the very outskirts of this if you know if that's more kind of your thing. These two little ones up here, I'm just going to use the jade green because they're quite high up. I'm just going to flat colour them. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that jade green in there. Make sure I'm going over it a couple of times so it's still got that. It's got that nice intensity about it. Right, uh, where are we going now? We're going back to yellow green. Yellow green. Now with this, I'm just going to use the yellow green. I'm not going to use the jade green at all because this is so close to our light source. So I'm going to put extra layers now. I'm pressing medium pressure here. And I'm just going to bring that down here like this. So you can see I've got that on just one side. And I'll bring it up around a little bit here too. Now I'll put another layer over the rest of this part because I don't want it to be wishy-washy. I still need the pigment down on the paper. But I'm pressing really lightly when I do that. And then I can go back and add in another layer onto my darker part there. Just like that. There you go, that's one pencil. Just one pencil. So let's have a look at these ones now. I see these ones are slightly more complicated um, just because they kind of overlap slightly. But again, we're just going to use the same principle as we did with the actual petal parts of these ones as well. So just get a layer of your yellow green down first. And then with the jade green, we're going to line on the opposite side of where the light source is. So on the left hand side. And we're going to do that with that one as well. And then we're kind of going to go with the same principle as we did with this one. We're just going to take the yellow green and we'll make this part quite intense. So a couple of layers down there. You can go into the olive green a little bit, but you don't want to go too far in because we still want to keep that quite defined. And then a sort of C shape on the left hand side up here. And then we just want to go back over get some more colour in there across these two parts here. Just make it look a little bit richer. I think that's something that always gives away cheaper pencils is that the, the saturation of what you're doing really, you know, you can, you can spot it, the difference between what is a delicate colour and what is just a, a cheap pencil that's hardly got any pigment. So it is important if you want to get good results with things like Crayola pencils, you're still going to have to put those layers down, but you're really going to have to learn to control the pressure in your hand. Righty-ho, I am quite happy with that. So onto the stalks, and we're going to take our olive, and I'm just going to literally just buzz this all the way up and all the way down all of these stalks. Having a sharp pencil here is really good because it's quite a tight little space to get into. 
Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Oh, I don't even, oh, nearly missed that one. Oh, this one professional. Let's pop a little bit of that in there. All the way down. This one's hiding in behind here. And so is this one. I really like this picture, it's so cute. I actually like this whole double page. And it's it's very good for doing things like this, you know, doing sort of tutorial type things because it gives you an entire picture to colour without having to spend, you know, and put it into like 12 parts, which has been known. It has been known. All right, so we've got our outer space now and we're just thinking about where the shadowy parts are going to be. So they're obviously going to be near the top. So if we start over here, I'll just pop a little bit in there. So that this is going on the principle that this is tucked in behind these leaves. So there's going to be a wee bit of shadow, but not much because the light source is heading in the upward direction. It's more, again, I've said this, and I think it was in the last video, it's more to acknowledge that there's an overlap there rather than the actual physics of the, the where the light is bouncing off. But I just it helps to give a sort of bit of added depth to the pictures, which I really like. Now this one's all sorts of in behind here. So we're just going to take our outer space and we're going to go over all these little parts that are in behind. And then we'll just pop a wee tiny bit there. Lovely, splendid. Righty ho, we've got these kind of little, these ones look like little light pools on a light bulb. <laughs> and we've got these kind of trumpety ones down here. So for the, for the trumpety ones, I would like to go back to our reds. So I have a red orange, which was the color that we'd used around here. And I have the brick red, which is what we used up in here and also just round these edges a little bit too. So dig that one out. So two pencils, much, much easier. So really, really light layer of the red orange. And we'll just pop that down to begin with. We'll do these little bits here too. These are so cute, I like them. Okay, so it actually looks like a really pale pink. So the kind of the same principle as we've been doing with these little caps here. I am going to, with a slightly heavier hand, I'm just going to kind of accent one part of that. And the same with this, but I'm going to bring it further over because it's slightly further away from the light source. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brick red and I'm just going to run it down that outside line. So again, it's like lining the line art, if you know what I mean. That sounds ridiculous, I know what I mean. And then we want to go over what's there with our red orange again. And I'm just tickling this because I want it to be quite delicate because it's it's very, very close to the light source. But it's the same thing again. You still want the pigment on the paper so that it looks like you've coloured it. And not just, you know, like sort of waved your pencil in the general direction. And that still looks quite delicate, but there is colour there, which is what we want. Now these ones up here, I'm going to use more of the brick red. So... I'm going to put a layer of the red orange down first because it is going to blend in with especially that one I've just done it's going to blend in with your background which is what we don't want so taking this brick red I am going to just go over the top of that and I'm pressing quite heavily there and I'm letting it up towards the bottom I know I know it's a tiny space so don't worry if you can't get it and you can just block color that and I'm just going to put that in there so you can see that's made it pop out and here I'm just going to put a tiny bit in up near the topmost part and then just sort of blend it together with that red orange. Okay, so now all we have left is these little guys here. For my preference, I would actually leave these white. Um, that's just me, but I understand that some people like to, you know, they like to do things. So I am going to take Unmellow Yellow, which is a sort of cream that's tilting towards a yellowish colour and all I'm going to do is I'm going to colour in these little uh, circular parts here and I'm going to press really heavily, I'm leaning really hard down on the pencil and I'm just going to put a little bit of colour in there because it is quite a faint pencil. Now, you, obviously, you can do this with any colour, but again, I'm just, I like to keep things together. I don't really like introducing new colours when I'm nearly finished a picture. 
So I think this is innocuous enough to to fit in with, with what's there. Now the other thing you can do here as well, if you don't want to leave these white, is you can keep the same pencil, the Unmellow Yellow, and this is the, us using the advantage of the fact that it's a really hard lead. And you can go in like a swirly circular motion really, really lightly, just over what you've done. Literally just to tint the paper. And it'll kind of give you that effect of the little fluffy dandelion heads you get. You know how you used to blow them as a kid? Um, and send all the little fluffy bits off. You can do that. Uh, I quite often do it with the um, the paler Prisma color, color pencils and uh, it gives quite a nice effect. But just say just a circular motion around there. If you don't like the white of the paper, you can do that and it makes it look a little bit more finished. And also what it does as well is it gives you this sort of halo around the outside of these, which I think is just quite nice as well because it, again, you're kind of hinting at that delicate sort of puffy you know, texture of them. I'll just pop that in there. So I'm not I'm not really putting any pressure on the pen, so it is a very, very pale colour. I'm happy with this one. I'll just put that a little bit more down there. Alright then. So I'll zoom out a little bit. And there you can see the finished article. We are all done. If anybody ever tells you that you cannot blend with Crayola pencils, please point them in the direction of these videos and share this picture and share your own creations. It can be done, you just have to work differently and you have to be patient. So I'm actually really pleased with how this has turned out. I think it's got quite a lot of depth to it. it you know, it looks reasonably rich, but I've still kept a, a sort of delicate feel to the colours. So I'm really, really happy with the way this has turned out. And it's been really nice to use my Crayola pencils again now that they are back in my possession. So thank you very much for joining me and colouring along if that is what you've been doing. And we shall see you soon in the cave for another video. See you next time.